Welcome back. And as you're looking out the back door or maybe the front door, I mean, it is a nice summer weekend. I know you've got some ideas for that to-do list, but how do you begin? How do you get that outdoor living room? We've got the answers right here because I've got Jamie Dury with me. Love him. Cindy Dole, this is Home Wizards, and thanks for hanging out with me. You might want to call in, by the way, because we're having so much fun. The number is 888-539-2980, 888-539-2980. So Jamie Dury, excellent, excellent book. Thank you. And Thank you. Um, and the shows, I mean, it just goes on and on. And I love how you're so humble about your success. So congratulations for that, too. <laughs> Thank you. That's very Yeah, because that's very important, I think. It is. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, the, the, you know, we really have moved uh, to this next level uh, of the outdoor space, I think. I mean, yeah. we've gone from, yes, having some cute furniture that we might have purchased way back from Smith & Hawken, which yeah. unfortunately is no longer around. Isn't that a shame? You know, and all these, I mean, the brands, they just keep growing and growing. But now mm. it's all about really being smart, as you were saying, with shapes. So, yes. So talk about how, when we look at our backyard yep. or our front yard, or maybe it's just a balcony, yep. what are we thinking of in terms of shape? Well, you know, it's it's interesting. I, I think, I, think um, I produced a book a long time ago called The Source Book, and, and this was essentially about choosing a range of of some of my hand-picked best design plants and I broke them down into categories like walls and so they were you know shrubs that would grow to six to ten feet um, that you could shape into a wall uh, they could be um, it could be anything from a metrosideros through to um, a lily pilly or a syzygium or um, uh, you know, it it just basically is a hedging plant, and mm-hmm. and I would say they are walls. Um, then I would I would look at other tree, trees that 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 have more of a lateral foliage, um, like the bohinia or um, uh, or a size or, or a, a sapium, uh, so that you know you're going to get uh, cover from those trees, and mm-hmm. you can plant those trees to to form a ceiling, like a parasol, or exactly, you know, exactly, uh-huh. exactly. Um, and so and so really, it's just about you know studying those plants looking at the shape of them and, and the natural habit and embracing that habit rather than forcing our architecture or habit across to it. Mm-hmm. Like I see so many people go to Disneyland, you'll see, of course, these amazing topiary shrubs that, that take hundreds and hundreds of man hours to clip and perfectly manicure into poodles and whatever else because that's the shape we well, want to put on them. Well, but... <laughs> yeah, and, and that's Disneyland, yeah, yeah. but that doesn't have to exist in your front yard. What I, what I t- encourage people to do is look at what's growing now naturally in your area, embrace its natural architecture and use those plants to design with for the for the plant architecture that they grow best in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So so you've got you've got irises and so forth which make fantastic low borders and shrubs. Um, you've got um syzygiums which make a fantastic hedge. Um, you've got um Beautiful yuccas and things, which I call accent trees, and they pull people out into the landscape because they're garden magnets. They're interesting, and they've got gnarly foliage, and and they look beautiful when they're lit at night. Dracaena Draco is all, also a beautiful one. Um, I hope you guys are writing these down, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, Rabinias are fantastic because they have that feathery, beautiful golden foliage, and of course they can be they can be pleached. Uh-huh. Uh, we call that lifting the skirt in the horticultural Uh-oh. world. Okay. Well, by the way, so we, it means planting small trees next to each other, maybe uh, six or eight feet apart from each other, and then allowing the umbrellas to kiss each other oh. so that you get this aerial hedge, yes. but then you pleach the lower trunks so you allow the, allow, allow the sunlight to get into the lower part of the bed, and then you can plant whatever you want underneath, so you get a double hedge out oh, of it. So many you layers, know? it becomes really complex. Yeah, yeah. So well, it's just about falling in love with it, that plant's architecture. Well, let's go to the phones because we want to then after this get into your, cool. your simple Dury design principles. Right? Okay. But uh, let's go to Claremont and Rhett is calling in. Hey, Rhett. Hi. How are you guys? Hi. Hey, Rhett. You have a question Hi. for Jamie. Yes, this is right up my alley. My living room is sort of all natural, it's like shabby chic with birds and rocks, just little natural, natural type things in my living room. And as he's talking, I'm thinking, okay, I'm looking at the backyard. It does not even match. How do I even begin? We wanted to build um for my living room. We just look at, at our pool, and there's like a stained glass. I mean, a stained glass, um, sliding door. Yep. And it's, it has the pane, so it looks sort of old fashioned. But when I look to the pool, it's an old fashioned kidney pool. Yep. How do I incorporate that? Now I see birds and trees and outside in the back, and I can see how I can extend the living room out into the backyard. Yep. I understand what you're saying, but however, my husband wants to build a pergola, and I feel that it's going to kind of chop it up well um what could i do to 
Well, the pergola, the, the pergola really, really should be used to frame your view, not chop it up in any way. So maybe look at the positioning of that. But if you want to start connecting the outdoors with the indoors, start indoors, sit on your lounge suite. What colour are your walls? Uh, sage green. Okay, write oh, down. That's a write, good choice. write down sage green. That's going to connect with the outside beautifully. So there's a colour choice there that, that that you can start with. What colour are your tiles or your carpet? It's uh, sort of like a beige. Okay, so so maybe we can look at some beige pavers and start to connect that into the outdoors as well. And then you've got to look at the layout and, and how you actually physically connect with the garden. So do you have sliding doors or do you have concertina doors or do you um, does it is it simply a back door that opens out into the garden that maybe you want to look at widening up so you get a greater connection? Um, are there windows inside the house that you need to address? And what about does she entertain? Does she use the pool? Right? Yeah, yeah. And is there an area to plant near the pool or is it all like a concrete deck. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to design over the phone, but I, I think I think what you've got to do is, um, and what I tell people to do is, is create that dining room or lounge room or kitchen, you know, in in one of the furthest extremities of the house in the gar- in the garden, so that everything between what you've built and where you live inside the house becomes more valuable. You start start be, starts becoming more trafficable, mm-hmm. and and suddenly there's the you know the the back end of the garden isn't no man's land anymore. It's valuable real estate that you spend time in. And maybe would you suggest that Rhett begin an inspiration board? Yeah. T- tell her about how to do that because, I mean, I love yeah. that for anything tied yeah. to the home. Yeah, it's it's easy. I mean, you know, take photographs of all the things that you re- that really inspire you. Tear out from magazines. From travels to anything, yeah, right? Yeah, from travels, pictures. magazines, pictures. Write down every choice you've made inside the house. You just talked about sage green and beige. So there's two to begin with. Uh, I would write down all the others in terms of art, texture, fabrics, whatever else. Mm -hmm. Then you can lock in on your style. And then uh, I would draw the boundary of the property uh, with a with a, a little Nico pen, um, put, plot the house on the boundary and start drawing big bubbles mm-hmm. on areas where the sun falls in the in the afternoon or the morning, on areas where you think the kids might like to play, on areas where you might need to, you know, dine with your friends and family. So you're starting to to plot out what I call a function on functional analysis. So there's many rooms in that outdoor room. Yes, there's different functions that exist within that space. And you'll start seeing these this space come alive and envisaging this in your mind and see the dining room, see the lounge room, see the uh, the, the, the accent points, and, and you'll very quickly design your own garden. I call it DIY design. Hey, Rhett, uh, stay on the line because I'm going to send you a copy of Jamie Dury's The Outdoor Room Book. <laughs> it's going to give you all the answers. <laughs> all right, thanks for calling in at 888-539-2 980 is the number if you too have a question 888-539-2980 so jamie explain for everybody your there's like five main principles that you have yes um very uh, simple design principles in terms of as we're looking at things as we're trying to create this beautiful uh, layout in our backyard Well, well well certainly what i would say is design with shapes first and plants later on that's definitely um one of the one of the best rules to begin with and what about just you call, you call it think about the human garden yeah right? what how do, how do we live you've got you've got to you've got to make these gardens human so you look at the most favorite rooms inside the house is it a lounge room is it a kitchen is it a dining room mm-hmm. and then you think about converting that favorite room into the outdoor space and and I actually enclose that with beautiful plants and and uh, and and lovely foliage so that you feel like you know it's 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 a part of I guess uh, what could be inside only it just mm-hmm. happens to have the sun fall on it. And you mentioned luxscaping earlier, and yep. and that's basically that that the sky's the limit. And hey, pamper yourself. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah, and I think I think these days technology's advanced so much, um, you know, so that you've now got solar powered heating, and you've got um, you know incredible pavers that don't heat up under your feet. Um, there's a, there's amazing composite decking like Trex are doing some incredible oh, things these days. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and then ninety six percent recycled materials. Mm-hmm. So that's a sensational um, environmental choice to make in terms of uh, materials. So I like to do different things like creating benches out of treks or creating screens and so forth. Um, you know, then and the light. I, Don't forget the light. Totally. Lighting. Um, so because you, it makes it a 24-hour garden, as that's you say, it, right? Exactly. Because we get home at like 5 o'clock at night, maybe, yeah. and now the sun is setting, and we, we, we want to stay out there longer. That's it, yeah. So and how it, would you suggest we add the lights? Well, I think you've got to look at um, plotting first your access points, then you've got to... 
then you've got to actually um, light up your boundaries so that at night you can actually see that valuable real estate and acknowledge it from the house. Um, and it draws you outside because you think, oh, there's my back fence, whereas previously you were just looking into the abyss. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? And 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 suddenly your, your garden really starts coming alive. You start noticing the beautiful architecture of the plants because you're uplighting some of those yuccas or you're uplighting some of those bohinias. All right, well, hold that thought because we're getting our, our way into the second hour when we come back. More with Jamie Dory and how to work with travel as an yeah, inspiration totally. and, and also weaving in your hobbies and those favorite things to really make your outdoor space, your outdoor room, something that is really you and that you love and that you're going to spend time and connect with nature. Home Wizard, Cindy Dole, 888-539-2980 is the number as we celebrate 4th of July. Hour 2 is coming your way right after this. Now everything is easy because of you. Well, hey there, and welcome to the second hour of Home Wizards. Cindy Dole here, and hope you're having a great Saturday for your 4th of July weekend. It's, I know, one of those weekends, it typically is when you have a third day off. That honey-do list or that do-it-yourself list or whatever it is, your your dream list, kind of gets a little long all of a sudden. And uh, not to worry, because we're going to give you some ideas and, and inspiration and, and, and really some great solutions so that you can kind of pick and choose and uh, choose your time wisely so that you can really come home and and turn your space into something that is is magnificent, whether it's a little space or a big space. So this is what we love talking about every Saturday from 2 to 4. The number is 888-539-2980. And be sure to go to the website, cindydole.com, later on. All the shows are there, and you can download them and take them with you. We have an app for that now, and you can uh, take the shows with you on your iPhone or your Android. And just listen through the website either way. And, and so it's just a lot of fun. And, and be sure to talk and join in the conversation throughout the week on Facebook. In fact, if you did, um, I have had a picture of uh, one of our guests who's still with me now, Jamie Dury, talking about his new book, um, The Outdoor Room, and someone already called in, and, and they have won the book, and if you go to Facebook, you might be able to have a chance to win another book, because it's a great, great, uh, amazing, um, very simple look at how to finally uh, transform your outdoor space. So just in a second, we'll get back to, to Jamie Dury on that. Then a little bit later on, have you ever thought about doing something with tile? You know, tile might feel like, oh my gosh, it's like a whole big project. I don't know if I want to spend my whole weekend doing tile, but we're going to talk with a guy who um, is part of a a great product uh, that makes it so simple. It's almost like Velcroing on tile to your countertop or even to your walls. And I mean, it's almost like tiling for dummies. And so we're going to get a little bit into that. And then later, if you are thinking of working from home or you already are, you know how it is. It's hard to, to be very disciplined with your time and with your space and making sure that it's all neat and orderly so that you control the war against paper and a control the war against emails. So we're going to talk with an organization pro on how to really turn that office space into something that is is finally ah, soothing and 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 stop the insanity kind of a space so that you can really um, stay on top of it. And maybe you could even go paperless. So wouldn't you? Know, wouldn't that be great? It seems like it's a non going effort, an ongoing effort to try to get rid of all that paper. So eight 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 five three nine two nine eighty is the number, and uh, we're going to get right back to Jamie Dury and talk about your outdoor room. I love this song because it makes me feel of summer. Jamie Dury, I know, if you all read in the LA Times, you saw, it was just about a week or so ago, it was a glimpse into how you live with your own outdoor room. Yeah. And boy, you must love that space. Oh, I love it. I mean, and there are blues and greens, and you have an yeah. incredible bar there, yeah. and there's yeah. a fireplace that looked like it was over your head. Is that, what was that? Yes, exactly. What, it's like a yeah. glass fireplace over the seating area of a it, couch. It, it is. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, company called Asaya from uh, New Zealand, and they they, um, uh, it's gas, but um, but it's you know it's very safe and it kind of just sits in the back of the the dining area. Mm-hmm. And uh, I tell you what, Thanksgiving we had the most fabulous meal out there with my daughter and everyone. It was just so much fun, and and just kind of being able to warm that space and sit outside during that time of the year was lovely, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. that's what it's all about, isn't it? I it mean, is. It from is. your show, The yep. Outdoor Room on HGTV, and now the book, mm-hmm. Jamie Dury's The Outdoor Room, which is brand new, and it's just it's a, it's a very well-done book. Thank but you. You, the heart of all this is about 
reconnecting with nature, yeah. and just spending more time outside. Darn yeah. it. Well, it's the gift of connecting people with plants, I think. Yeah. And everyone has it within them. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, these days we're, su- we're suffering what I call nature deficit disorder. Um, we've been distracted so much by technology, you know, by phones, Oh, wait, excuse me. I've got a tweet about that. Just one second. We're... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's, isn't no, it so right. true, it, right? It's sick, isn't it? Yeah, and, and actually there was a, uh, there's a, been a book written about this because children really? are suffering greatly from it, you know, oh, and I, I think um, some of the books I've written are, are really literally about connecting kids with gardens again, where we grew up, you know, mm-hmm. where we used to have fun with bugs and worms and look at the, the change of seasons and all that sort of stuff. You mean and, in the outback? Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> in the outback. Isn't and, that, well, that's where you got your passion, you were, you were saying in the book, yeah. growing up in Australia, right? And yeah, yeah, exactly. You'd, you'd look forward to getting rid of that school uniform and running out into with nature. And... Exactly, yeah. And it's, it is about, you know, I mean, my mum is a passionate gardener. That's probably where it first started. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can garden in the outback in red dirt with powdered milk and all that sort of stuff, it's you can garden anywhere, you know. Uh, and I remember watering her rose garden back in those early days when I was only two or three. So the the passion's got to start somewhere, but I think if you can connect people with the outdoors, you're doing yourself a favour. You're 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 giving your children, I think, that that well deserved um, sense of well being, because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. we're just distracting them so much with TV and with with video games and with all with apps and blah, blah, blah. and it's just like they've forgotten about the natural world, you know. And it really does provide you with a sense of well-being. It's, studies have shown that children study better. Um, it reduces stress in all of us when we're in gardens. You know, So if you can create places that, that, that you want to spend time in and build destinations like lounge rooms and dining rooms, well, then suddenly you're spending five or six more hours out in the garden than what you would have been had you just stared at it from the kitchen window. You know, When I get home and sit on, on our deck out by our little outdoor, in our outdoor room, mm. which is overlooking this beautiful hillside area, mm. I feel like my whole... Yeah. Breathe, my breathing slows down. Yeah. I mean, I'm not flatlining or anything, <laughs> but I feel I feel like I'm just so much more relaxed. You can yeah. literally feel like it just it's yeah. like this film that's just kind of going down, down, down. Yeah. And it is, and as you say also in the book, that having these kind of spaces enhances the spirit, right? It does, yeah. I it, mean, that's why people do yoga or they meditate right. outside because it really does, you know, it, it's it's just such a calming, beautiful mm-hmm. feeling. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, my house... If only we could lose weight with just having the outdoor room, wouldn't then it be I would great? really love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a theory for that one as well. A treadmill is what you're going to say. No, right? it's no? called weeding. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about the chemicals. Yeah. Put your elbow grease and, yeah. your, and your sweat equity well, you into know the what? house. We're gonna, let's talk about some of the ways that we could use that outdoor space. Why not have an outdoor gym? Oh, totally. Absolutely. I've built twi- two or three of them yeah. over the last year yeah. already. Um, and in fact, there was a gym instructor uh, who used to be a dancer and I built uh, an outdoor gym for her and her husband. And they love it. You know, they've got a treadmill and they've got a kind of a, a chin-up bar and, um, you know, a little kind of a, a step area where they can do the steps and, and it's, it worked it worked works really well, you know, because while her young two-year-old kind of plays around in the grass and stuff, she's out there exercising. And that's kind of inspiring, you know. Um, but m- my house, what I did was I, d- I flipped the whole house inside out. So oh. I actually have a bathtub in the backyard. Oh, my gosh. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. I have a you Japanese have a bathtub. bathtub. It's beautiful. It's it's solid uh, western red cedar recycled. And we, we lap joined it. And when the water goes into it, it, it fully you know becomes waterproof. And it doesn't leak or anything. And you sit in there and you're underneath the moon having a beautiful... And wait a, a minute, though, but... It's private, right? Of course it's <laughs> private. <laughs> I don't show the family jewels off that that quickly, darling. <laughs> but um, but I you know I've converted the lounge room into the outdoor space. The the kitchen sits outside, so I've got a full beautiful big kitchen. Which I, and I worked with a team of, with Fuego on that, and we we developed this you know cooktop which has counter space and 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 a sink and everything. So everything that I love inside my kitchen also exists outside. So there's really no reason for me to be inside the house anymore even when I'm working because I've just built a brand new design studio in the backyard which is really exciting. Well, you're saying that's like an old uh, shed, right? It's, it's a, yeah, I, I, it's the new spin on the old shed. It's a new spin on the old shed, exactly. It's uh, I did it with a company called Modern Dash Shed uh, and they do some wonderful kind of outdoor, you know, studio spaces, fifth bedrooms, artist retreats, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it my design studio and my staff are about to, um, you know, plop in there next week and, and have this beautiful indoor outdoor space where it's connected to the garden, where they're, they're sitting with a total garden view rather than being in a room in an office, which, mm-hmm. is, which is so uninspiring when you're designing, I think, you know? 
Sounds gorgeous. And I don't have to sit in traffic every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? you can be inspiring. So give people some more ideas because I love how you say, take your camera or wherever you go. Hey, we yep. have our iPhones. We yep. have our whatever camera yep. in the phone. Yep. Take pictures every time you say, you know what? I feel good here. What is it? Mm. Is it the color? Is mm. it the texture? Is it the plant, right? Mm. Oh, totally. And then also be asking questions like, what plants do you think might be used? And then write down yep. some notes. Or- yep, yep. Sketch them all down. I mean, there's a garden that I did here in California not too long ago where we actually used rammed earth. Now, a lot of people might say, what is that? And mm. we essentially excavated a lot of the earth from the, the backyard. And then we, we added about four or five percent concrete uh, and some aggregate. And we, f- we formed it into these concrete formworks. And what came out of that was this beautiful kind of lounge suite, which which we then surrounded with a whole bunch of Australian native plants and Californian natives so that it was, you know, you didn't need to irrigate this garden. It completely looks after itself. And are those kangaroo paws? They are kangaroo <laughs> paws, exactly. And 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 so, you get, you know, this was, this was a bit of a mix between my lovely Australian natives and your gorgeous Californian natives and creating something that was essentially a water-wise garden, uh-huh. but also using materials that placed less harm on the environment, and that is rammed earth. So we literally pulled the earth up out of the ground and created architecture out of it, which became beautiful outdoor lounge seating, you know? Well, well hold on to this thought, because I think, could you stick around for one more segment? Totally, yeah. Because we have, to. we're not done, I'm afraid. Oh. We have so much to talk about with okay. Jamie Dury, and you have a chance still to, to call in and maybe you have a question on this 4th of July weekend, 888-539-2980. What is it that you love about being outside? What are those moments, and we still have to get to, how do you bring your personality, besides having a gym, outdoors. Maybe your personality is to feel like you're in Hawaii or Bali yeah. or maybe you love your you like sports memorabilia. Could yeah. you have that in your outdoor room? Of course. We'll find out. Home Wizard Cindy Dole. The fun continues after this. Welcome back, Cindy Dole here. This is Home Wizards, and we're getting started because we have a nice long weekend, and I know you want to do things to improve the spaces you go home, and we love talking about it every Saturday from 2 to 4. The number is 888-539-2980, 888-539-2980, talking with Jamie Dury. You know the guy. You've seen him on HGTV, uh, the show The Outdoor Room, and now the book, Jamie Dury's The Outdoor Room. And I love some of your lines, like, the human garden is a space that should accommodate your life. Yeah. Right? That's a great bumper sticker. Or it's not just about plants that grow in the garden, but the human spirit. Yeah. That's think, a that's a t-shirt. Exactly. Or <laughs> think outside the home you live in. Think outside the home you live in. Yeah, which which is which we use all the time. Or your lounge room just got a whole lot bigger. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Any of that works. Yeah. Well, what about someone right now who's listening who has just an apartment or a balcony? They're going to yeah. say, yeah, yeah, Jamie, I don't have much space, but come on. I've driven around town and you see some really creative uses of those balconies. With yeah. certain, what, what would you do to incorporate the texture and the height and the that privacy and all that well I think um, you know we, we look at gardens these days as as something that kind of grows in the ground and then you know we don't think much further than that but these days vertical gardening has become so popular and um, you know oh, yeah. we, we, we've been doing this commercially in the business for many years but now it's available to people domestically and I think um, you know on balconies and areas like that what you want to do is not take up too much lateral space but you want to utilize the vertical space and get those gorgeous plants up on eye level where you can really suck them in and enjoy the foliage and the lushness of it all. So vertical gardening is a great way of doing that, and um, I do it in my home. In fact, all my fences Mm -hmm. are completely clad with vertical gardens, and it takes up no space, but I'm not looking at a boring fence. So instead of looking at one of the walls of your balconies, maybe that could be a vertical garden, and you could start thinking about planting into that and fix the garden bed to the wall. Um, you know, Google it. There's a hundred different ways to do it. It really is very simple. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the one of the suggestions I would make. I'd also look at, um, you know, m- usually you've got the super kind of breathing down your neck or whoever, uh, uh, body corporate telling you you can't do this and you can't do that. But there are lots of ways to create gardens that move with you. And mm. uh, there's some lovely decking tiles out at the moment that you literally can clip into each other. And they're like they're like wood decking, but they're small tiles sure. about a foot by foot. Have you seen them? Yes, I have. Uh-huh. They're bloody fabulous, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And and teak. You know, Aren't they made of teak? 
I hope not, because oh, okay. because there's no such thing as uh, as green teak. Okay, uh, it usually comes from rainforest. But there are there are uh, uh, there are some forms of decking out there which do come from reclaimed timber or gotcha. uh, offcuts of timber okay. because they're shorter cuts. Mm -hmm. And when you clip those into each other, you can pretty much lay a whole deck on your balcony in about 20 minutes. Mm. I mean, you know, my Fun. daughter my daughter did it on, on a friend's balcony recently. It was just so crazy, you know. Um, so also when you're looking at container plants, look at narrow tall ones so they're not taking up a lot of space on your balcony but you, you're getting the plants up nice and high choosing plants that are more vertical in structure rather than horizontal so like horse, horse tails right horse tails equisetum's a great one um, uh, dietes vegeta's another one formium tenax is a great one um, different grasses yeah or... um, lamandra longifolia tanica is, a, is another great one um, so ornamental grasses are fabulous uh, even euphorbias uh, are yeah. succulents that, uh -huh. don't, that grow vertical stems that don't have spikes that don't need a lot of water. All that stuff's great for balconies. And of course, you can pack it all up and take it with you when you leave. You know? Nice. Portable yeah, gardens. because I mean, I get attached to my garden, don't you? I mean, did you? Oh, you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm so happy that I took um, some of the precious plants that my dad had in my childhood home. They're just yuccas, but That's I, nice. and I planted them in our garden, and so yeah. now they're just huge, and it's just so fun because it's a great personal memory. Yeah, you know, of, of where you grew up. Yeah, and totally. I think that if you you take you know you nurture a garden, you take you take care of it, you're yep. so proud of it. Yeah, it's kind of sad to have to leave it behind. Yeah, right. Um, if absolutely. You have to move. Yeah, but yeah. you can always go out and buy new. You can. I mean, I I have. I have so much fun getting out to the nurseries. In fact, you live out by one of the greatest yep. nurseries, Monrovia, yep. um, out out your way, which is gorgeous. And that they supply a lot of plants for our shows. They're fantastic plants. So I'd, I, I, I would encourage people to get out to local nurseries, take photographs of all the plants that inspire you, and start creating a scrapbook. And, and and really, you know, you can start to design your own garden very easily just by, you know, uh, when you go on – I mean, everyone's going on holidays, mm. right? Well uh, – Hopefully, yes. <laughs> <laughs> most, pe most people are getting out of town and, and taking a holiday over the summer. Um, so why not make it purpose travel? and take a scrapbook with you and a little notepad and start photographing all the things at those lovely resorts and beachside areas and whatever else that inspire you. Plants, textures, colours, bricks, materials, stones, tiles. Write them all down. Take photographs that match with the notes and get home and, and recreate that holiday. Bring your holiday home mm -hmm. and you'll never have to leave house again. But forget the souvenir things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. We, we yeah. don't need the snow cones. <laughs> Right? Are you a gnome guy? You're not a gnome guy. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I do have them in my range, actually. But but uh, but they're they're kind of cute. They're all like all white. Oh. Um, so they're, they're they're very monastic little gnomes. But um, but yeah, no, I don't. I mean, collect. it's fun to be playful. I mean, isn't yeah. that also one of the 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 philosophies of Jamie Dury to to really get, get back to being a kid where yeah. you would just stare at the clouds for hours. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and when you have one of these outdoor room spaces, yeah. you're just out there in it and you lose track yeah. of time. Totally, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think you know it, it, whatever whatever it is you love doing inside your house, flip it outside, do it outside, you know, and and design it outside. You you'll, you'll really your family will thank you for it. And don't forget about the uh, the, the financial side of it as well because it really is a growing investment you know starting to invest in your landscape and giving your, your your home curb appeal is is such a great way of adding value to your home during this tough time in the economy we can't forget how water is used because that's oh, yeah. such a great multi-sensory experience and so another tip that you say is to, to as you're taking pictures and making notes kind of ask yourself when you're visiting a great home or garden yeah. how are they using water right oh yeah Do, is I, it a I pond mean, is it if a... I drive past another house in, in in my neighborhood that's dripping garden water down the street because it's pretty amazing to think that we're still using drinkable water, potable water to water our gardens with. Why aren't we putting more rainwater tanks in our gardens? Why yeah. aren't we recycling our bath water and our, our shower water and putting that out into the into the, into the the gardens using more grey water systems? I believe there's only like five or six of them in the California area that uh, j just last year or something and mm. there should be hundreds mm. because we're wasting all that water. We're throwing it out into the street. We're diverting our, our, our water off site rather Rather than allowing that rainwater, precious rainwater, to be absorbed by the landscape, so it's about creating permeable landscapes where the water is absorbed into the landscape, rather than creating hard surfaces where it runs off into the street, picks up toxins in the street, ends up in our oceans and our riverways, choking our fish. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about it's about creating using plants that require less water and less chemicals. That's the secret. And in terms of water, on the positive side, I mean that's about 
you know, wasting water, we also still want to enjoy the beauty of water in our surroundings for our, an outdoor space, right? Oh, yeah. A water feature. Yeah. Uh, the trickling sound of water, whether yeah. it's a, a, a Japanese bamboo fountain. Yeah, totally. I mean, the shishiodoshis are beautiful. They were used to scare deers off in, in, in Japanese farms. And uh, and it's just a simple piece of bamboo that fills up with a piece of, with, with, a, with a log of water. Uh, and then when it gets too heavy, it, 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 it makes this uh-huh. little sound. It's so cute. You know, and that's a simple way to use a very minimal amount of water, but recycling the water through that one bowl. Okay. Mm. Um, so we're going to be taking a lot of pictures. We're going to be taking a lot of notes. Yeah. And um, Watching lots and, of the outdoor room th- on HGTV. And watching that. <laughs> but also remembering that um, we want to have our personality in this space, yeah. right? Because it should feel like us. Yeah. So what would you advise in terms of people tuning into what they're, what, who we are to get into that? How well, do we... There actually is a little section in my book that talks about that very thing, and it's about studying who you are, um, about getting into your 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 design um, karma. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, uh, genetic makeup, if you yeah, like. Sure. And, and so you know the the colors and the textures and the things that inspire us are what make us who we are. And I think when you can start logging all of that down, and you know really opening up your wardrobe and going, what colors do I wear most? You know, um, it all kind of makes sense it comes together yeah looking at the jewelry jewelry you you use uh even the cups and saucers and plates that you've chosen in your kitchen um some of the colors of the wine glasses maybe uh it could be paint colors throughout the rooms in the house they're all expressions of you and that's so important to invest yourself into that backyard space or that your, we- outdoor room. your website is jamie dury dot com and it's d-u-r-i-e that's right the show is on hgtv at and it, it's it's uh sunday mornings and it's on uh the uh, hgtv across the country yeah yeah uh, i also host uh pbs the victory garden of course um, and uh, stay tuned for another show or two coming up and yeah we've got series four coming up and and please go out and get and the book pick up a copy jamie that- dury's the outdoor room yeah it's a fabulous book thank you jamie dury <laughs> all right you come thank back you. i would love to come okay, back Okay, you're coming back. You're All fantastic. right. Very fun. All right, up next, Cheers. wait to learn how to tile without using mortar. It's almost like literally like Velcro. It's going to be a fun project and then later how to have a nice organized home office. Cindy Dole, Home Wizards, and we're back after this.